Today's guest helped lead the Majets to a state softball championship. Joining me now, it's Gerard Cedarstrom, or CD, head coach of Minot High Softball. He's everywhere with the Minot Storm, just growing the game every single time we're out there, coach. So I'm going to let you have the floor on a pretty broad question right off the top. Tell me a little bit about what's been the best moments of coaching softball with the Majets and Storm, and honestly, how much you're even called Gerard anymore compared to CD? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I'll address the last part first. Uh, I'm probably called Coach or CD way more than I'm called Gerard, and I'm fine with that. Um, let's see. What would be the best moment probably would be um, being hired, first of all, as a coach for the high school. That would be one of my best moments. And another one would be the state title in 2018. Mm -hmm. What kind of uh, was the process of getting hired there, given that like it was a big achievement for you? Well, um, it's a fresh program. It was just being accepted by the North Dakota High School Activities Association. So there were a lot of new things happening. So, I mean, it's basically built from the ground up. And being a part of that was very intriguing to me. And I knew it would be a lot of hard work and a lot of hours, a lot of dedication and there was just a lot for the kids to, to learn, and I felt like I could you know, help the program grow and teach those kids. Even though like, it was exciting, was there ever a time you were like, oh, geez, yeah, we're definitely growing this program right from the ground up? No, it was, it was invigorating. I know Sweet. it had started in the summer or a couple of years prior to that with a few people, but uh, it just goes way back to my dad and myself started with the rec's permission on using their fields on Sundays. And we would, Sunday afternoon, we would have kids come from anywhere and come and we would teach skills. We would teach, you know, batting, fielding, pitching, whatever we could to whoever wanted to learn it. Uh, and we had kids from all over the Northwest come to that. And some of them even, this was before anything was really organized. And we actually had a some of them go and play at Minot State for a year or so. Mm -hmm. So on the other side of things during the summertime, uh, you got the Minot Storm. It's a pretty broad youth program that includes Majets, it includes Lakers, it includes several girls from around this area. Tell us a little bit about how what your role is with that along with Thor Nelson. Well, I pretty much just instruct kids and coach Kids, we have uh, any kid that asks for some private help, and I can fit it in. I'm there at the batting cages or on the field in the evenings or wherever. And I just feel that I can give back and help whomever. And I, we have kids from Besanon. Uh, we had some kids from Garrison, Mohall, Stanley, Burlington, Velva. We have kids from all over. I probably left out some. Uh, Botno even come down and, and if there's a chance that I can help some of those kids learn something you know I'm all for it mm -hmm. and when you were bringing up just the state championship run that you guys had in 2018 did you feel something special about the team from the start or did you guys really build towards that crescendo and get hot there at the end how would you kind of define that well it, it was interesting as the season was going on you know we knew we were good but we didn't know how good as the team so as we kept going there came a point during the season and I can't remember exactly how far we were or not and I just told the girls I said girls you got to bring it every day I said but you know what this is your team you guys figure it out and I'm okay with that if you know we're gonna have some losses and we're gonna have some big wins but you guys you guys figure it out let me know how you want to go and I just went with the flow then, and they took ownership of the team, which has got to happen. And they decided what their destiny was in their hands, and they just went out and played. And, and it kind of goes to show when we were in our regional tournament in the semifinal game playing Century, they had a couple of home runs off us, and you know uh, we were a little rattled. And the girls, it, it just didn't bother them. We lost that game, so we had to play the state qualifier the next day. And the girls showed up 
same emotion, same everything. And uh, our pitcher, Marissa Andresiak, went out and threw a no-hitter. And she got dinged the night before. And the girls went out, and we, we came out and 10 run them, and we had a great day. And that's like, the team gets it. That was like the final, the team gets it. So when we went to state, each game, we just did what we had to. We didn't do anything fancy. We just did what we had to. If it was a bunt, a sack fly, a big hit, make the play, we just did it when we had to. And I, I give that credit to the girls taking ownership of their own destiny there. From your position also, it must have been nice to have the Andresiacs for a long time, huh? Well, they were, you know, especially Marissa, because she's a, you know, quality pitcher and she really helped solidify that position which is you know down the stretch we've had some good throwers we had uh aspic was a really good pitcher good thrower i'm probably going to leave some names out but even that uh riley terrell was a number two thrower we used three girls that that whole season in 2018 when we had to uh marty folks threw some for us and it was just a collective team effort that way and it was nice to have Andresiak be a part of that when you're watching and coaching the game from your position in the dugout what kind of nuances show up in softball compared to baseball what do you deal with as a softball coach that doesn't show up in baseball well baseball's kind of gone away from the small ball and that's still big in softball because that can lead to some big innings and just the speed of the game uh it's just a lot. Everything's just quicker than in baseball. I love baseball. Don't get me wrong, but they all play for the big inning, the home runs. Uh, they don't, I, I see people playing back and in softball, the girls can bunt on their own. I give them, you know, the green light. They see something, take care of it. So I mean, to me, those are the, some small nuances. Mm-hmm. So what kind of has made softball, means so much to you man like you're the you're the head coach it means a great deal to you to, to lead the majets uh you want to be everywhere for your storm players as well so over the years over the course of time what makes softball the sport you've wanted to be so closely involved with i think it just kind of evolved into that i'm very passionate about coaching period and teaching period um whether i'm in the classroom or out on the field as my classroom or the golf course as my classroom because I'm an assistant golf coach too. I just do whatever for the kids. It's, it's a way to give back, and I love seeing kids grow and achieve things that they maybe didn't think they could. It's just, it's just really fun being a part of that, creating family atmosphere. They know that I'm there for them no matter what. It might not just be, you know, storm. I go to this, then I go watch volleyball. I go watch hockey. I'm there for those kids, no matter what they need, and and I just think that that drives my passion. For you personally, what's kind of been, do you have any Sertoma Park highlights for yourself playing softball at all? Uh, No, I didn't play a whole lot after Legion Baseball because I was coaching Legion Baseball. When I got done with that, I started coaching, and I was just limited as to the times I could get to play. I don't, I never got to play in a state tournament because we were playing in our tournaments at the same time. Uh, it was just fun. Uh, I just remember getting after it and I had some good friends, Dwayne Foley got to play at high levels. He was a pitcher. So I obviously reached out to him to help out when we were first getting going, but you know, just, just things of my own. I was involved with state titles playing and coaching and regional titles and regional championship games, state championship games, just the things you can learn from sports and activities to give back to these kids to learn about themselves, teamwork, uh, don't give up. You just never know. You know, things like that. It's, it's kind of driven me to be where I am today. Being the assistant golf coach, do you beat Scott Foltz day in and day out at Varden and Surris, or how does that usually go? <laughs> well, yeah, good. We don't compete, but if we did, and throw Mike DeLorme in there too, Mike DeLorme would clean us up something fierce. He's a really good golfer, but we don't ever compete. We don't ever play. We I, we basically are out there coaching the kids and not playing ourselves, contrary to what everybody thinks. What happened to the internal competition that sharpens the iron on both sides? Well, we have that. We use that through the kids. Okay. We try to get the kids to be better each day, and we don't 
it's not a rivalry between the three coaches. It's three coaches working to get the kids better to become better, and that's where we're we're working at that. Is it ever tough for you guys to stay dialed in on the sidelines during a football game? I know you love to shoot the breeze, but you have to be the chain gang too. No, I'm kind of one of those people that can have many different things going at once and still see the shiny thing or the bird or the butterfly that went by and still refocus. So okay, I, I guess that's part of coaching too. Thank God. So uh, you kind of uh, nailed a couple of points that I've heard from time to time when I come out to uh, use a couple of game soundbite clips for the Majets at practice and whatnot. Uh, how much fun is it? Uh, watching the girls get interviewed for the news and they don't know what the heck to say and you kind of prep them for two minutes and then you still watch it happen? Well, I try to help them answer some questions because sometimes they don't know what to say, but I don't want to steer them and say exactly what I say. And I want them to be themselves and still come out with what they want. But in the meantime, we're probably screwing around in the background, throwing balls at them or walking across the back or trying to screw them up and have a little bit of fun with it. What would you say has been your boldest soundbite that you've given, given that uh, most of the time you're just saying, well, we want to get better today. We don't care about the game next week or the state championship on day one. Any bold claims from you ever? No. (laughs) Um, What would be the boldest thing you've ever said? We still live day by day, but probably the thing I've – I mean, my wife, she's, she's, oh, you guys are winning. You're pretty good. And I said, oh, we got a lot to work on. And she just gets sick of that. <laughs> so one of the days that I came home and said, you know, we're pretty good. We could we could do some damage in the state tournament. We just got to get there. And, you know, that was probably 2017 was I, I said something like that. And she just like, are you serious or are you just joking? Because you never say something like that. So, I mean, I just, I try not to have the expectations too high, but yet still strive to get to those high expectations. Hey, man, if you're telling me the same things that you're telling your wife, I mean, I appreciate that honesty across the board, Coach. (laughs) I'm not telling you everything I tell her, though. (laughs) I know. Um, Getting into this summer, obviously it was terrible what happened in the spring season, but how how important was it to the organizers to have a storm season in 2020, given losing the Majette season? I think it was it was very helpful to a lot of people, you know, me included. Uh, get out there, get a sense of normalcy. We're going to, no matter what, we're going to keep moving forward. And some things just sidetrack you. And I feel bad for the seniors that they didn't get to finish something that, on their terms. But, you know, that's kind of life. Sometimes we don't get to finish on our own terms and things happen. And you just got to adjust and and be able to handle adversity, and and that's part of life. That's a big part of life, actually. But getting out to the storm and, you know, back to Thor Nelson, being extremely organized and pushing and getting stuff going and keeping things going, you know, kudos to him for for organizing and getting all this stuff going. Absolutely. Want to have him on sometime for sure. Now, a lot of people will recognize you from this as well. Uh, your brother Gary being a longtime MLB umpire. Um, how often have you seen him in action? I know he's been in some big game assignments. And when you do, how much are you maybe tuned into how he's doing if he's behind the plate when you're watching games? Well, honestly, it's easier to watch the games on television because I get a view of better view of the strike zone or the league strike zone or I should say the network strike zone. But, you know, I just kind of watch the game for entertainment, too. Uh, I'm, I'm in tune to little nuances of the game that some people don't notice just because I've been around the game a lot, and I do talk with him once in a while. But, you know, it was great to go see. We got my wife and I and my father went to the World Series in Washington, D.C., and it was awesome to be there, the atmosphere and, and everything. It was great to see, and then he steps down after that. So, it was, you know, honestly, it was really great to go see him in a setting like that yeah i was gonna ask like how much pool do the umpires get for their tickets but i guess they can get any big show huh well no uh-huh. um they're allotted so many tickets from my understanding but they have to pay for them mm. so you know we pay our own way it's not like he just gets free tickets in you know that the all-star game 
uh, any playoff game. But during the regular season, if I show up at, you know, say Target Field and he maybe be able to get two tickets and they don't have to pay for them. They might get comped by the league or, or some, I don't know how that always works there. It's each ballpark is different. Mm-hmm. But at least it would be like a face value and non scalp ticket. If you're talking about the world series, perhaps. Correct. Every, and from what I understand, every ticket in there is paid for by somebody. So mm-hmm. they might, he might get some tick. like the umpires get family, get so many tickets. And then if my family's not coming, I might give my four tickets to the other guys because it's their family is coming or, you know, they just share it that way. Mm -hmm. When you guys have uh, talked about him being an umpire, has he ever shared anything about like, boy, this guy was so mad. uh, It was a crazy ejection or man, I might've missed that call going down the stretch. Any anecdotes from him, you know, being on the field? He's real. Mm -hmm. He's honest. Um, And he owns it. He's always said, if I, I, I think I butchered that one. I really didn't see it. I called it a strike, and you know maybe it wasn't. Sorry, you know. And he's because he's willing to own up to it. I think uh, a lot of guys leave him alone because if he just flat out said, "I mean, I don't know what you're going to argue." Yeah, I missed it. You're right. I shouldn't have missed it, but I did. Now what? Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't have an argument anymore. I feel like I could hear that even from like local umpires and refs around here, and like it goes all the way up. Just be real, huh? Yeah, it, I think it's real important for that to be real. And yeah, you missed the you missed that, or you got the wrong rule interpretation. I'll check on it. Be personable, and I think you know he's had a lot to do with area officials around here. He's come back a lot, and he's talked with them, and just hey, this is how you got to make, and this is kind of how it is. I know he worked with the North Dakota High School Activities Association uh, and talked to them about helping officials talk to officials and, and even coaches, coaches. Uh, I, I, in softball, I can speak for that. I haven't seen a coach get out of hand in softball in a long time. And I think part of that's because we kind of take care of ourselves and we need umpires. So what doesn't, doesn't help to go yell at the umpire and lose it. And then they don't want to do any more games. So I've come a long way. I used to harp at them too, but I have, I don't know the last time I, got into it with anybody yeah i was curious about that but then at the same time i wonder what what would it be like if uh gary in his mlb retirement would come back and umpire one of your softball games and then you didn't see his call eye to eye how would that shake out ball like it does with anybody else right now (laughs) go out go out and ask a question and get their answer and move on because it isn't going to change unless it's something that could change by the rule interpretation then i'm going to try to get it changed Mm-hmm. To be correct, but that's, other than that, nothing. That would just be like a classic local Minot sports matchup to see of Gary versus CD at the plate, yeah. dusting it up that's, on the turf. That's pretty good chance that'll never happen. <laughs> <laughs> he has been in my dugout over the years, even coaching Legion baseball, and he'd come back on vacation or whatever and be hanging out. And I, I remember one instance we were in Williston. And he was in our dugout, and things were not right, and I hadn't been barking, I hadn't nothing, and I turned and looked at him, and I said, now do you see what what, what I'm going through? And he goes, yeah, you better go talk to him on this one. You know, so I was like, oh, I, you know, he gave me permission to actually go out, and this would be a time to do it, and went out and came back with the response, and he was like floored. (laughs) So it was... Just, you know, his perspective and our perspective, it's, it's nice getting a different perspective now and again. But, you know, he's been, he's seen a lot. So now that he's helping out, he was going to help out with high school and he helped out all summer. It's it's kind of nice having him around and seeing his perspective and his knowledge of the game. You're going out there and you're like, hey, I'd like to cite uh, this guy who's had years of experience at the MLB level, how, how this is this call is wrong. What's up? Uh, no, I don't do that. <laughs> I'm not there to show anybody up. Just try to get it right. All right, perfect. Well, um, I'm just glad that the storm got through it here over the summer and uh, hope to see you guys just completely back to normal next spring so you can chase another uh, state championship for Minot High and the West. CD, I appreciate your time. Hey, thanks for having me. It's been fun, and uh, the only prediction I'll make that uh, nothing is certain anymore.
<laughs> oh, yeah, we could always say that for sure. Uh, that's uh, Gerard Cedarstrom, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Ben. Take care.